moment of prayer. Father, we are asking that you will open our eyes of understanding as we read your word today. We are asking that relevant passages that really speak to our present needs and problems, spiritually and physically and materially, you will impress upon our hearts. Be with us, enlighten us, instruct us, teach us as we read together now. In Jesus' name, I pray. We'll continue with the reading now. The third book of Moses, called Leviticus. Chapter 5. And if a soul sin, and hear the voice of swearing, and is a witness, whether he hath seen or known of it, if he do not utter it, then he shall bear his iniquity. For if a soul touch any unclean thing, whether it be a carcass of an unclean beast, or a carcass of unclean cattle, or the carcass of unclean creeping things, and if it be hidden from him, he also shall be unclean and guilty. Or if he touch the uncleanness of man, whatsoever uncleanness it be that a man shall be defiled withal, and it be hid from him, when he knoweth of it, then he shall be guilty. Or if a soul swear, pronouncing with his lips to do evil, or to do good, whatsoever it be that a man shall pronounce with an oath, and it be hid from him, when he knoweth of it, then he shall be guilty in one of these. And it shall be, when he shall be guilty in one of these things, that he shall confess that he hath sinned in that thing, and he shall bring his trespass offering unto the Lord for his sin which he hath sinned, a female from the flock, a lamb or a kid of the goats, for a sin offering, and the priest shall make an atonement for him concerning his sin. And if he be not able to bring a lamb, then he shall bring for his trespass, which he hath committed, two turtle doves or two young pigeons unto the Lord, one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering. And he shall bring them unto the priest, who shall offer that which is for the sin offering first, and wring off his head from his neck, but shall not divide it asunder. And he shall sprinkle of the blood of the sin offering upon the side of the altar, and the rest of the blood shall be wrung out at the bottom of the altar. It is a sin offering. And he shall offer the second for a burnt offering, according to the manner. And the priest shall make an atonement for him for his sin which he hath sinned, and it shall be forgiven him. But if he be not able to bring two turtle doves or two young pigeons, then he that sinned shall bring for his offering the tenth part of an ephah of fine flour for a sin offering. He shall put no oil upon it, neither shall he put any frankincense thereon, for it is a sin offering. Then shall he bring it to the priest, and the priest shall take his handful of it, even a memorial thereof, and burn it on the altar, according to the offerings made by fire unto the Lord. It is a sin offering. And the priest shall make an atonement for him as touching his sin, that he hath sinned in one of these. And it shall be forgiven him, and the remnant shall be the priest's as a meat offering. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, If a soul commit a trespass, and sin through ignorance in the holy things of the Lord, then he shall bring for his trespass unto the Lord a ram without blemish out of the flocks, with thy estimation by shekels of silver, after the shekel of the sanctuary, for a trespass offering. And he shall make amends for the harm that he hath done in the holy thing, and shall add the fifth part thereto, and give it unto the priest. And the priest shall make an atonement for him with the ram of the trespass offering, and it shall be forgiven him. And if a soul sin, and commit any of these things which are forbidden to be done by the commandments of the Lord, though he wist it not, yet is he guilty, and shall bear his iniquity. And he shall bring a ram without blemish out of the flock, with thy estimation, for a trespass offering unto the priest. And the priest shall make an atonement for him concerning his ignorance wherein he erred and wist it not, and it shall be forgiven him. It is a trespass offering. He hath certainly trespassed against the Lord. Chapter 6 And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, If a soul sin, and commit a trespass against the Lord, and lie unto his neighbor in that which was delivered him to keep, or in fellowship, or in a thing taken away by violence, 
or hath deceived his neighbor, or hath found that which was lost, and lieth concerning it, and sweareth falsely, in any of all these that a man doeth, sinning therein, then it shall be, because he hath sinned and is guilty, that he shall restore that which he took violently away, or the thing which he hath deceitfully gotten, or that which was delivered him to keep, or the lost thing which he found, or all that about which he hath sworn falsely. He shall even restore it in the principle, and shall add the fifth part more thereto, and give it unto him to whom it appertaineth in the day of his trespass offering. And he shall bring his trespass offering unto the Lord, a ram without blemish out of the flock, with thy estimation, for a trespass offering unto the priest. And the priest shall make an atonement for him before the Lord, and it shall be forgiven him for anything of all that he hath done in trespassing therein. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command Aaron and his sons, saying, This is the law of the burnt offering. It is the burnt offering because of the burning upon the altar all night unto the morning, and the fire of the altar shall be burning in it. And the priest shall put on his linen garment, and his linen breeches shall he put upon his flesh, and take up the ashes which the fire hath consumed with the burnt offering on the altar, and he shall put them beside the altar. And he shall put off his garments, and put on other garments, and carry forth the ashes without the camp unto a clean place. And the fire upon the altar shall be burning in it, it shall not be put out, and the priest shall burn wood on it every morning, and lay the burnt offering in order upon it, and he shall burn thereon the fat of the peace offerings. The fire shall ever be burning upon the altar, it shall never go out. And this is the law of the meat offering, the sons of Aaron shall offer it before the Lord, before the altar. And he shall take of it his handful, of the flour of the meat offering, and of the oil thereof, and all the frankincense which is upon the meat offering, and shall burn it upon the altar for a sweet savour, even the memorial of it, unto the Lord. And the remainder thereof shall Aaron and his sons eat. With unleavened bread shall it be eaten in the holy place. In the court of the tabernacle of the congregation they shall eat it. It shall not be bacon with leaven. I have given it unto them for their portion of my offerings made by fire. It is most holy, as is the sin offering, and as the trespass offering. All the males among the children of Aaron shall eat of it. It shall be a statute forever in your generations concerning the offerings of the Lord made by fire. Every one that toucheth them shall be holy. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, This is the offering of Aaron and of his sons, which they shall offer unto the Lord in the day when he is anointed, the tenth part of an ephah of fine flour for a meat offering perpetual, half of it in the morning and half thereof at night. In a pan it shall be made with oil, and when it is bacon, thou shalt bring it in, and the bacon pieces of the meat offering shalt thou offer for a sweet savour unto the Lord. And the priest of his sons that is anointed in his stead shall offer it. It is a statute for ever unto the Lord. It shall be wholly burnt. For every meat offering for the priest shall be wholly burnt. It shall not be eaten. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto Aaron and to his sons, saying, This is the law of the sin offering. In the place where the burnt offering is killed, shall the sin offering be killed before the Lord. It is most holy. The priest that offereth it for sin shall eat it. In the holy place shall it be eaten, in the court of the tabernacle of the congregation. Whatsoever shall touch the flesh thereof shall be holy. And when there is sprinkled of the blood thereof upon any garment, Thou shalt wash that whereon it was sprinkled in the holy place. But the earthen vessel wherein it is sodden shall be broken. And if it be sodden in a brazen pot, it shall be both scoured and rinsed in water. All the males among the priests shall eat thereof. It is most holy. And no sin offering whereof any of the blood is brought into the tabernacle of the congregation to reconcile with all in the holy place shall be eaten it shall be burnt in the fire. You have just listened to the Bible reading, and we need to take whatever we have learned to the Lord in prayer. Will you all rise up, please? Talk to the Lord in prayer. You've seen a commandment, a warning, an example, 
an instruction to obey, a promise to claim, pray for grace that you will do as you are blunt in the word of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. We want to rise up and give our tithes and offering to the Lord. In Luke chapter 6, verse 38, it says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure pressed down, and shaking together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. For with, what, for with the same measure that you meet with thou, it shall be measured to you again. Whatever we have brought tonight to offer to the Lord, either as tight and offering please let's raise it up as we pray our father will thank you for the privilege to always bring to you i mean to give out of the blessings you've blessed our life with we are praying tonight as we offer this you receive from us and bless us in return in jesus name thank you because we know you have answered in jesus name we pray
from regions, states, and nations across the world. The fact is that he bore 
our sicknesses. Jesus carried each and every pain. The Lord is walking mightily in me. The Lord is walking mightily in me. No matter what the circumstances, what I feel or see, the Lord is walking mightily in me.
miracle time. My miracle time. Miracle time has come. Blind Bartimaeus encountered Jesus. His blindness was over. At the Pool of Bethesda, the crippled man encountered Jesus and began to walk. In a powerful encounter with Jesus Christ, Javier's daughter was raised from the dead. Miracle time has come. Your time to encounter the God of miracles, signs, and wonders is here at the Global Crusade with Kumui GCK, convened by Pastor Dr. W.F. Kumui. The Republic of Zambia. Your time has come to welcome a great God who does great miracles at the September edition of the Global Crusade with Kumui. GCK in the fine encounter with a God of miracles from 21st to 26th September 2023. The crusade will be held at the National Hero Stadium, Lusaka, the capital of Zambia, at 1600 hours GMT daily and a global worship service at 0700 hours GMT on Sunday. Arena of miracles. Arena of healing. Arena of deliverance. Also featuring ministers, church workers, and professionals conference themed Exceeding Limits in Ministry on September 22nd, 25th, and 26th at the Mulon Gishi International Conference Center at OC's Ordered Hours GMT. It is time for a special divine encounter with God for teenagers, campus students, and young adults in their Impact Academy. Pastor Kumui, a mentor and lover of young people, will be used by God to challenge them on awakening the sleeping giant on Saturday, September 23rd at 0600 hours GMT. From every corner of the world, the global audience gathers in one accord, connected to God's word and power through satellite, radio, TV, and the GCK social media platforms. And all of us who are online, I want to tell you that the miracle power will come from the Alpha location here and get to you right there. Sweet music. Yes, heavenly music will fill the year during this crusade with a special worship session led by Jonathan Lee. Whatever you are asking from the Lord, healing, deliverance, miracle, mountain moving, whatever, this is the moment it will be done. Experience God, experience miracles. Isaiah chapter 55, I read him from verse 1. It says, Oh, everyone that tested, come, come ye to the waters, and he that has no money, come ye, buy and eat ye, come buy wine and milk without money without price somebody else has paid for that it was the invitation to salvation and to the kingdom's feet the lord gave the word great was the company of those that published it the lord gave the word and he's still giving the word today as you have received and you are saved you have the word now you possess the word now go with that word the lord gave the word you see them at the train station you see them in the bus you see them in taxi you see them in your school you see them in your market you see them in your community the lord gave the word great was the company of those that publish look at that parable all those servants that he sent the first said they went the second they went even when they had rejected from the former servants the people is still saying they kept on going pain, you know what can have pain in our body what can have pain in our mind pain in our soul those corrosive words those acidic words 
and those torturing walls the people direct at us and they splash the acid of a bad watch on us it causes pain affliction in the heart the lord did not say there will be no pain what he says endure you will feel it how could he say that and he didn't look at me like that how did he just you know looked at me and, and i'm doing my best and i'm doing the greatest thing any man could do on earth and then i thought it was even a friend an intimate person look at what he said and what he did look at the criticism it bites it pays it's part of the affliction but if you're going to do the will of God, it says, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist. You'll go through thorny roads and thorny paths. There are many things that will happen. It's only when you endure, you'll be able to continue doing the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. And it is what we endure, we get over those things, over those hurdles, and eventually we we'll make it, you'll make it in Jesus' name. In Hebrews chapter 11, verse 27, Hebrews 11, verse 27, by faith, he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured. He endured. If Moses had not endured in Egypt, all those confrontations by, by Pharaoh, and all the things he said, terrible, terrible. Even the children of Israel, what they said, you've increased our trouble. They criticized him. There were times they even wanted to stone him if he had not endured to the end. He would not have brought the children of Israel to the border of Canaan to then hand over to Joshua and to say take them in and, and you remember that's how we have the bible it's out of those israelites that moses brought to the land of canaan it's out of them we have the bible the first five books by moses himself and then joshua and the judges and all the books of the Old Testament, out of those people that came through the people that got to Canaan. Those, that's the why we have the Bible. Even the New Testament, as you look at the New Testament, all those Jews, Jewish people like Paul, like Peter, like James, like John, that they've given us the Bible. But it took one man to endure all things. He wasn't looking at what he suffered at that present time. He was looking at the future. And if we don't endure whatever comes to us now, and we shut up, and we pack up, and we fold up, and we melt down like wax, and we cannot have a backbone to continue and to endure, many generations, hundreds and thousands and millions of people will miss what we have to offer. But we have to endure. Endure as the messenger, the servant of the Lord, and do what he has called us to do. You will endure. Amen. Let's rise up and talk to the Lord in prayer. Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer. As we go to the Lord in prayer this evening, brethren, let's bless the name of the Lord and uh, appreciate him that his salvation is still free for all, everywhere in the world. And he's still calling on all. Look unto me and be saved, the ends of the earth. That is still the call of God upon all. Freely, he is still saving today. Though many may be ignorant and they still remain under the hold of the devil, but yet our preachings will liberate them. If we go aligning ourselves with the great company of those that are publishing the word, others did it, that's why we got saved. And that's why the Lord has freed us from the hold of the devil. Let's join others. Let's also do it relentlessly. Let's do it tirelessly. That is the way to do it. We cannot afford to be tired. 
we may have to go sometimes in pains, sometimes with tears. The Lord has said it. They that sow in tears shall reap in joy. Those who go bearing the precious seed weeping, they shall doubtless come back, bringing the shields with them. Let's go all out. And the Lord will support us. Since it is his work, he put us in trust with this work and we must please him the way we do it. We must not relent in our efforts. We must not allow disappointments. We must not allow any discouragement. We must not allow failure thought to sidetrack us in any way. The Lord is willing to use us if we are willing to serve him. But why will, not, why will we not be willing? Let's recommit ourselves unto the Lord, yielding ourselves unto him anew that, Lord, we are willing to serve you. Multitudes are in the value of decision that we can bring right into the fold of God. Let's go all out after them. And another opportunity is coming up this week by the grace of God, the GCK for this September. Though Alpha location in Zambia, yet the Lord expects that from all over the world, all over the globe, wherever we are, that we faithfully, dutifully, diligently get involved in the publicity, in the prayer, in the participation. And then with the readiness to do follow up. We cannot afford to fail God. It is the one duty that God has entrusted us with and is expecting us to please him, not please ourselves. We have no, we have no reason. We have no reason to disappoint him. If we go out in his name, we shall surely make it by his grace. By faith, we go. And surely, we will make it. And as we go, get ready this week, we're also praying for the converts that all that God expects of us we will do to preserve them in the faith, in the grace of God, and serving God too in their lives from the onset that they give their lives to Christ. Open up before the Lord. Tell him what you will do and he will give you the grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Most high God, our loving Father, it pleases us that you so much reckon with us and you so much count on us that we can do this work. And that's why we, you put us in trust with the gospel. We pray, O oh Lord God, that we will please you the way we render it in Jesus' name. We pray we will not be tired. We pray that we will not allow any thought of failure or any previous disappointments or discouragements to have any hold upon us. We will go forth in your name, in the name of Jesus. And as regards this week's GCK, we identify with you, Lord God. And we pray that in every way you intend to use us, have your way with us in Jesus' name. In the publicity, in the praying, in the participation, and in the follow-up, Father, use us as you will in the name of Jesus. Thank you very much because you have answered. And for your servant that we use, we pray, O oh Lord God, that you load him with more anointing in the name of Jesus. That in a greater way, you will use him far, far beyond what you have done in times past, O oh Lord. Thank you because you have answered. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Let's close our eyes for prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the privilege of being here together with your people. We pray you will not be hearers only, but will be doers of the word in Jesus' name. Amen. Teach us yourself. Amen. Let your spirit make the word clear to everyone. Amen. Help us, Lord, to focus on your word and to understand what you are teaching us and to follow through and to experience everything you have for us. Amen. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You can see that we're coming to John chapter 17. Tonight we're looking at verses 13 
all through to 19. John chapter 17, verse 13. And now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Those are the verses we are looking at today. Very deep verses, extensive verses indeed. As you come back to verse 13, it says, Now come I to thee. We remember that Jesus Christ was praying. He started the prayer at the beginning of the chapter of chapter 17. And the prayer still continued. And therefore, we're looking at this and we're titling the message tonight, Christ's supplication for our sanctification. Christ's intercession for our sanctification. Christ's prayer for our sanctification. But we're titled it supplication. Christ's supplication for our sanctification. Look at verse 13 again. He says, And now come I to thee. The Lord Jesus Christ had come into the world. But now he knew he was uh, going back to heaven. The departure of Christ from the earth was very near. He was about to go to Calvary. He about to die for us. He about to shed his blood for salvation, for redemption, for justification, and for sanctification, for everything that we need. And he knew it. He knew he was going back. He was going back home. He was going back to heaven. He was going back to God. He was going back to the Father. Look at that verse 13 again, and now come I to thee. You see the assurance there, you see the certainty there, and you see the confidence with which he said, now I'm coming back to thee. There is something you need to know about the Lord Jesus Christ. Number one, he knew why he came. Number two, he knew what was to be done. Number three, he knew how to do what he was to do. Number four, he knew where to begin what the Lord had called him to begin. Number five, he knew who to engage along with himself. Number six, he also knew when he will finish and then go back to the Father. Pick that up one by one and think about your life. Think about yourself. That you have come to this life and you understand why you have come jesus christ knew why he came he came here and was not distracted he was not diverted he went on doing exactly what he was called to do and he was looking at the goal and looking at the destiny and looking at the terminal point there is where i'm going and he went and he did without any distraction not only that number two he knew what he came here to do and he was connected with that and he concentrated on that just what to do and now that he knew that he had finished what he ought to do he said now i come to thee in his prayer and you need to be certain like that understand like that that you know why you are here and you know what you are supposed to do number three he knew how to do it that it will please the father and he used the appropriate method he used the best method so that he will please is the father in everything that he did now number four he knew where to begin and he stayed there he wasn't uh, you know here and there jumping up and going down and they uh, going about and beating about the bush exactly the place he ought to begin he knew where to begin uh, and he stayed there number five he knew who to engage along with himself and he chose them so that they will do what ought to be done he knew when, number six, the word 
would have gone around and when he would leave and would have finished the work he was assigned to look at chapter 17 in john chapter 17 studying from verses 13 to 19 the topic tonight christ's supplication for our sanctification there are three things we're looking at number one our separation and preservation from the world number one our separation from the world and preservation from the world number two our sanctification and purity through the word our sanctification and purity through the word number three our service and participation in his work our service and participation in his work number one our separation and preservation from the world come to chapter 17 of john john chapter 17 i'm reading from verse 14 it says i have given them thy word it's talking to the father here is our savior here is the lord he knew what he had taught he knew what he had commanded he knew what he had given to the people to his own disciples and he said i have given them thy word and the world has hated them because they are not of the world even as i am not of the world i pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil he'll keep you from evil they are not of the world even as i am not of the world you see what jesus comes to say there are two things there number one the true believers separation the true believers separation number two the transformed believers preservation the transformed believers preservation number one the true believers separation you can you see what he said about his own disciples in a chapter verse 14 i pray the lord will be able to say the same thing about you he looks at your life he looks at your heart he looks at your spirit he looks at your attitude he looks at your practice he looks at your behavior he follows you to your home he follows you to the place of work he knows you and he sees you everywhere and now you can say this about you verse 14 i have given him i have given her the word of god the word of the father and the world has hated him and the world has hated her because he is is not of the world she is not of the world even as i am not of the world look at the repetition in verse 16 is not of the world they are not of the world even as even as in the same way to the same level to the same understanding and to the same purpose that i am not of the world they are not of the world even as i am not of the world the true believers separation from the world look at chapter 15 chapter 15 of john i'm reading from verse 18 it says in chapter 15 verse 18 if the world hates you ye you know that it hated me before it hated you if you were of the world the world would have loved its own but because he are not of the world you see how sure he was how confident he was he was happy that these people were genuinely converted they were genuinely born again he was happy that the message of life and the message of salvation of eternal life has worked effectively in the hearts of these people and he could look at them he saw them even when they were not physically with him because he knew all things and he could tell that they were not of the world and he says but i have chosen you out of the world therefore the world hates you again i pray that god will bear testimony concerning you the lord jesus will bear testimony concerning you and look at uh, chapter 29 of proverbs proverbs 29 i'm reading from verse 27 because you see in the message of jesus in the declaration of jesus he said the world hated them how about that how will that happen the world hated them look at chapter 29 proverbs 29 verse 27 an unjust man is an abomination to the just 
an unjust man is an abomination to the just and he that is upright in the way is abomination to the wicked because their lives are different these ones are converted but these ones are too corrupt these ones are upright but these ones are wayward these ones are cleansed but these ones are defiled and the oil and water they will not mix there's a separation here and it says because this one is just and because that one is unjust that's why the unjust will hate the just this one is righteous and that one is unrighteous that's why the unrighteous will hate the righteous look at that verse again and measure your life with this if the thieves love you if the robbers love you if the people that are reprobates if they love you if all the people are saying hey hey yeah master you are this and that and they love you and yet they're evil then you can tell you're on their side and thank god i'm not on their side Look at verse 27 an unjust man is an abomination to the just and he that is upright in the way is abomination to the wicked in fact when the lord called the children of israel he made that separation very clear that distinction very clear we're looking at leviticus chapter 20 leviticus chapter 20 i'm reading from verse 23 leviticus chapter 20 and we're looking at verse 23 if you're a real child of god if you are really born again your life will be so different your life will be so bright and your light will so shine that the people in darkness will know you are not part of them the people in occultism will know you are not part of them and the people who are still drinking sin eating sin dressing sin and going about in sinful ways they will know you are not part of them because there's the true believer separation from the world the fifth course chapter 20 i read from verse 23 look at it it says and ye shall not walk in the manners of the nation which i cast out before you for they committed all these things and therefore i abhorred them i detested them i rejected them i threw them away i destroyed them look at verse 24 there in verse 24 it tells us but i have said unto you ye shall inherit their land and i will give it unto you to possess it a land that floweth with milk and honey i am the lord your god which have give me the word there tell me out aloud say it confidently separated you from other people they're not of the world even as i am not of the world you're not copying them you're not copying their style you're not copying their language you're not copying their waywardness you're not copying their evil you're not copying their devilishness you're not copying their waywardness you're not copying anything they're doing look at verse 26 and ye shall be holy unto me for I, the Lord, am holy, and I've severed you, separated you from all the people that ye should be mine. And so you see what Jesus was saying about his own disciples, even from the Old Testament, they're not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Jeremiah chapter 10. We're looking at Jeremiah chapter 10. You see the same thing going on uh, here. Jeremiah chapter 10, and I'm reading from verses 1 and 2 jeremiah chapter 10 verses 1 and 2 hear ye the word which the lord speaketh unto you who is the lord talking to tonight i said who is the lord talking to tonight hear ye the word which the lord speaketh unto you look at verse 2 thus says the lord learn not the way of the heathen learn not the way of the hidden how do the hidden say uh, you know the pagans the unbelievers the idol worshippers how do they do this how do they do this how do they marry how do they celebrate when they have children how do they celebrate when they have cars how do they celebrate when they have promotion learn not the way of the heathen how do they conduct their burial ceremony learn not the way of the heathen how do they do export how do they you know give bribes so they can have this land not the way of the heathen you see if we're children of god if we're born again there's such a mad difference distinction between the believer and the unbeliever that's why jesus said i've given them thy word and the world 
world has hated them because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that you'll keep them from the evil. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. It tells us in Romans uh, chapter 3, Romans chapter 3, I'm reading from verse 19. In Romans chapter 3, verse 19, here is the reason we're not of the world. As the reason we're different from the world, look at this, verse 19, Romans chapter 3. Now we know that what things soever the Lord says, it says to them that are under the law, that every mouth may be stopped, and all the world, and all the world, and all the world may become guilty before God. You know, if you're like the world, then you are guilty with the world. You are condemned with the world. You are defiled with the world. You are going to be punished with the world. But because it says the whole world is guilty before him. But you are not of the world. I said you are not of the world. Uh, you are not sure. You are not sure. Look at look at uh, First John chapter two. First John chapter two. You see the people who are born again. There is a difference. Difference in their thoughts and difference in their lifestyle and difference in their action. Difference in their behavior. Difference in their family setup. Look at this. First John chapter two verse fifteen. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world the laws of the flesh and the lost of their eyes and the pride of life is not of the father but of the world and the world passeth away their fashion is passing away and their fads they're passing away all the things they're doing they're not stable you find them this year this is what they follow you find them another time that's what they follow and the world passeth away and the laws thereof but he that doeth the will of of God tell me abideth forever if you want to abide forever you are not going to be like the people of the world you'll not be doing the things that the worldly people that they are doing it tells us in 2nd Peter chapter 2 verse 20 2nd Peter chapter 2 verse 20 for if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world you see there's pollution in the world there's dirt in the world there's defilement in the world and all these things are abominations in the world and when you become born again when you give your life to Jesus Christ and when he touches your life and when he forgives your sins and when he redeems you and when he cleanses your heart and when he converts you you escape the pollutions of the world for if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world it says through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ if they are again entangled therein what's the word we give for that i said what's the word for that if somebody became born again escaped and is born again and now is back again entangled what's the word for that backsliding it's gone back he's gone back he's gone back into the wilderness he's gone back into his vomit he's gone back into defilement he's gone back into pollution he's part of the world again and christ cannot testify about him anymore christ cannot be a witness anymore that is not of the world even as i'm not of the world because he's again entangled therein and overcome the latter end is worse for them than the beginning it will not happen to you look at verse 21 for it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them verse 22 but it has happened unto them according to the true proverb the dog is turned to his own vomit again and the so the swine the pig that was washed to a wallowing in the mire look at james chapter one james chapter one i'm reading from verse 27 james chapter one verse 27 pure religion that's in pure religion that's traditional religion that's religion that does not save that's religion that you know, is just nominal head knowledge go to church come back the same way Go for revival, come back the same way. Go for crusade, come back the same way. But it's pure religion. I believe that's what you have. I say that's what you have. 
and the Lord confirmed pure religion in your life in Jesus name it says pure religion and undefiled before God and the father is this look at this to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself tell me unspotted from the world to keep himself unspotted undefiled unstained untainted uncontaminated from the world we're looking at james chapter 4 verse 4 james chapter 4 verse 4 the adulteress and adulteresses know ye not that the friendship of the world the fellowship of the world love for the world is enmity with god whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world eating what they are eating drinking what they are drinking going to the same nightclub and going to their cinemas and everything whosoever will be a friend of the world is the enemy of god i pray you'll not be an enemy of god we're coming back we're coming back to john chapter 17. john chapter 17. this point one deals with number one our separation from the world number two this point one deals with the transformed believers preservation from the world the transformed believers preservation from the world we're looking at uh, john chapter uh, 17 and we're looking at uh, verse 15 i pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil there's evil in the world because there's a devil in the world and because there's evil in the world devil in the world that's what the lord is saying god will preserve you and god will protect you from the evil in the world actually when you are born again that system of uh, deliverance and that system of uh, protection and preservation is ready within uh, that salvation galatians chapter one in galatians chapter one i'm reading from verse four galatians chapter one verse four who gave himself for our sins that's talking about calvary that's talking about the cross of jesus that's talking about the sacrifice of jesus christ for salvation who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world i am delivered i said i am delivered from this present evil world any evil in your community you'll not be part of that it will not affect you it will not come into your family who gave himself for our sins that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of god our our father we're looking at galatians chapter 6 verse 14 galatians chapter 6 i'm reading from verse 14 but god forbid that i should glory save in the cross except in the cross of our lord jesus christ by whom the world is crucified unto me and i am crucified unto the world it says we have nothing in common it's like they've crucified you on the cross they have rejected you they have sent you away from them and so that's all right i am crucified to the world and the world is crucified unto me the evil of the world will not touch your life second timothy chapter 4 verse 18 second timothy chapter 4 verse 18 and the lord shall deliver me from every evil work i think this is good for you to repeat for yourself and the lord shall deliver me from every evil work can you say that again do you believe that the lord will do it he'll preserve you he'll protect you and the every evil work of any occultism any power thank god you are free let, let me read it now for you it says and the lord shall deliver me from every evil work and will preserve me preservation for you will preserve me unto his heavenly kingdom to whom be glory forever and ever amen, amen. We're looking at first john first john chapter four first john chapter four i'm reading from verse three 
first john chapter 4 we're reading from verse 3 and every spirit that confesses not that jesus christ is come in the flesh is not of god this is the spirit of the antichrist the spirit in the world is a spirit opposed to christ of the antichrist it will not attach itself unto you it says whereof ye have heard that it shall come and even now already is it in the world ye of god little children and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world greater is he greater is he greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world tell me how can they conquer you tell me how, how can they suck you up tell me how can they hide you in their dirty work you are preserved in jesus name look at verse look at verse 5 they are of the world therefore speak they of the world and the world heareth them we are of god he that knoweth god heareth us he that is not of god heareth us not hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error chapter 5 chapter 5 i'm reading from verse 4 chapter 5 verse 4 for whatsoever is born of god overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith who is he that overcometh the world but he that believes that jesus is the son of god look at verse 18 you need to mark this one in your bible verse 18 what did i say to you do to verse 18 mark it in your bible we know thank god i know we know that whosoever is born of god sinneth not but he that is begotten of god keepeth himself and that wicked one touches him not can they touch you no. will they touch you no. can they destroy your life no. they have come they have come they want to destroy me don't say that again they cannot I said they cannot look at that we know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not and he that is begotten of God keepeth himself and that wicked one touches him not wherever they are coming from they cannot touch you verse 19 and we know that we are of God and the whole world lies in wickedness look at verse 21 little children keep yourselves from idols we're coming to point number two now point number two and we come back to john chapter 17 john chapter 17 i'm reading from verse 17 john chapter 17 verse 17 our sanctification and purity through the word our sanctification after we're saved after we are born again and our names are written in the book of life there is still another experience that christ gives and he provided that on the cross of calvary and he prayed for that look at this chapter 17 verse 17 sanctify them through thy truth thy word is truth go to verse 9 in verse 9 i pray for them I pray not for the world. You see, the world cannot have sanctification. The world can have salvation. They have to start there. When you start school, you have to go, you have to start at level one. You have to you have the rudiments first. And so when you come into the kingdom of God, you cannot say, I want sanctification. No, you begin at salvation. So Jesus said, the prayer I'm praying, I pray for them, I pray not for the world, but for them which thou was given me for thee are thine look at verse 20 in verse 20 neither pray I for these alone what that means is neither pray I for these 11 disciples around me alone Judas says God was not there 12 minus 1 is 11 neither pray I for these 11 disciples alone but for them also which shall believe on me through their word any believer in the house today praise the Lord he prayed for you 
I said he prayed for you. What's the prayer? What's the prayer? Verse 17, sanctify them. Through thy truth, thy word is truth. Our sanctification and purity through the word. Look at this. Number one, I divide this to various sections. Number one is prayer for our sanctification is prayer for our sanctification we're looking at uh, first thessalonians chapter 5 first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23 and the very god of peace sanctify you holy he will sanctify you holy and i pray and i pray god your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. Can you be sanctified? Yes. Will you be sanctified? Yes. When you are sanctified, would it remain permanent? Yes. Amen. Yes. I said amen for you. Yes. It's affirmed in your life. It will be done in your life. Faithful is he who has called you. He will do it in Jesus' name. Number one, his prayer for our sanctification. Number two, the purity through sanctification. The purity through sanctification. In Titus chapter 2, Titus chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 14. It says, who gave himself for us, that he might redeem us from, how many iniquities? all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works look up here when you have salvation you are a purchased person you are a pardoned person that's number one but now you go forward now you go from being pardoned or being purchased and you become peculiar any peculiar person here today the lord will confirm it in your life who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar people zealous of good works we're looking at first thessalonians chapter four first thessalonians chapter four and we're reading from verse three first thessalonians chapter four verse three for this is the will of god even your sanctification is the will of god you will accomplish it in your life that you should abstain from fornication and that every one of you how many of us only the pastor only the preacher only our mother sent the Lord. How many of us? Everyone. That every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in. Tell me now. Sanctification and honor. Number one, his prayer for sanctification. Number two, the purity through sanctification. Number three, the provision for our sanctification. He provided for it, the provision for our sanctification. We're looking at Ephesians chapter 5, and I'm reading from verse 25. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave themselves for it. That's not for the world. For the world, he gave himself so they can be saved. He gave himself so that their sins can be forgiven. But you are not part of the church. You are born again. And there's a second step. There's a second experience. He said, Christ also loved the church. And he gave himself for it. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. That he might uh, present it to himself. A glorious church. A glorious church. Look up here. There is a graceless church where they don't preach grace, they don't preach salvation, they don't preach eternal life, they don't preach about getting to heaven, just religion, just religion. And the grace of God is not there. You go in, you come out the same way you came. There's no change, there's no transformation. But first of all, there's the grace of God. And that's a gracious church gracious church and now they're gracious in the experience because they're born again they're gracious in their interaction because they are born again the way they deal with each other relate with each other they think of each other. they have love they're gracious but then after the first experience of grace there's the next experience of sanctification that makes you part of the glorious church it will happen yeah. 
It says that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such sort of thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish, the provision for our sanctification. We're coming to Hebrews chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2, and I'm reading here from verse 9. Hebrews chapter 2, we're reading from verse 9. It tells us in Hebrews chapter 2, verse 9, but we see Jesus, you see him by faith. Who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death, crouched with his glory and honor. That he, by the grace of God, that's what I was talking about, the grace of God is for salvation, should taste death for every man. That for it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons where? unto glory you see that first of all the grace of god is there and then eternal death is taken away from you and the judgment of death is taken away from you but now there's a second step it brings you to glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering for both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all of one for which cause is not ashamed to call them brethren there's the provision for our sanctification number four the purpose of our sanctification everything has a purpose whatever christ does as a purpose he saved us and he said that's not enough and he wants to take us further there must be a purpose to this the purpose of our sanctification we're coming to hebrews chapter 10 hebrews chapter 10 and i'm reading from verse 14 hebrews chapter 10 reading from verse 14 it says in verse 14 for by one offering, a seed perfected forever, them that are sanctified. What's the purpose? He wants to perfect us. He wants to perfect you. Look at verse 14 again. For by one offering, he has perfected forever them that are sanctified. And look at verse 16. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their where? In their hearts and in their minds will I write them. You remember that God wrote the law on the tables of stone. And people read that. And then when the you know, situation comes, they can forget. And how many times, you know, we hear something, we hear something, we hear something, and then we forget. And the Lord said, you know what I'm going to do for you? I'm going to sanctify you. Is he talking to you? Yes. And then he says, the purpose is, I'll perfect you, and then that law will not be far away. I'm going to write that law inside your heart, inside your mind, so that whenever there is any challenge, and whenever there's any temptation or trial, you will remember the word because it is written inside you. Yes. The Lord will do it. Yes. Romans, Romans chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 6, the purpose of our sanctification. Romans chapter 6, we're looking at verse 6, knowing this, that our old man is crucified with him, the salvation, the salvation, the old man, the old nature is crucified. But it goes on that the body of sin, the totality of sin, the root of sin, the one that generates sin, it says that the nature of sin might be, what's the word there? Destroyed, that's sanctification. When it's crucified, it's not dead yet, but crucified, that's salvation. But now it says that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth you should not serve sin. Number five, the price of our sanctification. The price. What price did he pay? What's the price for that sanctification? Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 13. He paid a price. It's like if somebody paid a price for you to collect now because everything has been paid for. And then you go there and then he asks you, have you gone to collect that thing I paid for? Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't have time. 
But that thing is so precious. And I brought all my income, all my everything I've got, and I paid for that thing on your behalf. The Lord shed his blood and he paid the price for your sanctification. And you will not say, I didn't have time to go and uh, have that thing. Uh, you are going to have it. Uh, look at uh, chapter 13, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 12. Hebrews 13, verse 12. Wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with what? With his own blood, suffered without the gate. Let us go forth, therefore, do something about that. Consecrate your life, give yourself, and then abandon yourself to the Lord. He says, Let us go forth, therefore, without the camp bearing his reproach for here we have no continuing city but we seek one to come he paid the price look at verse 20 verse 20 of that same chapter 13 now the god of peace that brought again from the dead our lord jesus that great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant you see the price there the blood of the everlasting covenant make you perfect in every good work to do his will walking in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through jesus christ to whom be glory forever and ever amen, amen. Number six, the preparation for our sanctification. What do I do? How do I prepare? We know that when somebody needs to get saved, there's a preparation. He hears the word of God. There's conviction of the word of God. And then he repents. And when he repents, he believes on the Lord Jesus Christ and salvation comes. I about sanctification. What do we do? Our preparation for sanctification. We're coming to Leviticus chapter 20. Leviticus chapter 20. I'm reading from verses 7 and 8. Leviticus chapter 20. 20 and we're reading from verses 7 and 8 it tells us here verses 7 and 8 it says sanctify yourselves therefore it says yes i'm the one to sanctify you but you'll sanctify yourself you set yourself apart any defilement anything that you know this is not right this is not right this is not right as i'm born again i need to live the privileged life of being born again sanctify yourselves therefore and be holy for i am the lord your god look at verse 8 and ye shall keep my statutes and do them that's sure whatever he has told you already and whatever you know really as child of god God, how to do this how to do that I need to correct that thing I need to make that thing right that's not a right I need to change that you can do you do all that in preparation then he says I am the Lord which sanctify you I am the Lord which sanctify you you make the proper preparation and then sanctification will come Look at Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 6, Isaiah chapter 6, and I'm reading from verse 1. Isaiah chapter 6, we're reading from verse 1. It says, in the year that King, King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon his throne, high and lifted up. And his train filled the temple. Above it stood the seraphims, each one had six wings, and with twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet. And with twain he did fly and one cried to another and said holy 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 our god is holy our god is pure our god is righteous it says holy 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 is the lord of hosts the whole earth is full of his glory and the post of the door uh, moved at the voice of him that cried and the house was filled with smoke then said I, when you saw the glory of God, when you saw the holiness of God, when you saw the brightness of those angels, and he compared all that with himself, he knew that he had been a prophet. And you see in chapter one, he had been preaching salvation. Come now, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they'll be as white as snow. He's been preaching salvation. He preached salvation in chapter two, and even in chapter three, and chapter four, and chapter five. And now he looks at himself, although he was 
was saved but he said woe is me for i am undone because i'm a man of unclean lips and i dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips for mine eyes have seen the king the lord of hosts then flew one of the seraphims unto me having a live coal in his hand and which he had taken with the tongues from off the altar and he laid it upon my mouth something will happen today the fire that burns every impurity will be taken away the fire the flame that takes away every defilement inner defilement everything will go away in jesus name there is sanctification there's a second work of grace that the lord does in the heart it says he laid it upon my mouth and said lo this has touched thy lips and thy iniquity is taken away and thy sin purged purge that's the purification that is the sanctification you prepare for it you see he demanded for it he prayed for it he confessed that he needed something more and that thing that was more the lord did it he'll do it for you we're coming to second corinthians chapter seven second corinthians chapter seven i read from verse one the preparation that we need to make for our sanctification look at this it says and having not therefore these promises dearly beloved let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness of the flesh and spirit perfecting holiness in the fear of God that's what we need to do and as we do it the Lord himself will sanctify us in Jesus name number one is there is prayer for our sanctification number two the purity through sanctification number